Hey guys, it's me, Josh. Uh, we had a blast out here at the Panamint uh, Valley in the Panamint Mountains. I highly suggest if you guys haven't been out there to take a trip, check out the sites, uh, check out the trails. If you don't have a four wheel drive, maybe pick one up and go and, and take a little adventure out there. Uh, it was an awesome trip that we had and I, I highly suggest getting out there and experiencing uh, the desert from the Panamint Valley. A uh, couple of issues that we had with the vehicles, uh, just to kind of give you guys a little bit of a hand on maybe troubleshooting issues you might have in the future. The, the first one, the Jeep Wrangler, they thought that they had blown a head gasket because their vehicle was overheating. Well, we went out there and we talked to them. It was my Uncle George's uh, Jeep. And it turned out that he was just driving in the wrong gear. Uh, we were, there's a slight incline for a long stretch of road that leads from Trona to the Panamint Springs or, or Panamint Valley. And he was in fifth gear, the overdrive gear, and about 2,000 RPMs. Well, because of that, he wasn't able to turn the, the water pump. He wasn't able to turn the clutch fan and overall cool the engine the way it needed to be cooled. So simply shifting the gears from fifth down into a, a lower gear and getting the RPMs between 3,000 and 3,500, his vehicle was able to uh, keep cool and he had no issues the rest of the trip. Uh, another issue we had was with the Forerunner, uh, the driving down the main road out of Ballarat, he, his vehicle just, as my cousin Kyle, his vehicle just ended up shutting off. So I pulled out my test meter, my electrical meter. I tested everything and I found that the fuse for the EFI had failed. So we grabbed another fuse, we stuck it in, in and as soon as we stuck it in, it, it popped. So we tried a little bit higher amp fuse, same thing, it popped immediately. So we decided to put a jumper in after not being able to find the short to see if we can maybe induce a little bit of smoke. Maybe a, a wire could burn a little bit so we can smell it and, and isolate the problem. I mean, if the, the issue's already there, we might as well use it to our advantage to determine what was going on. After doing so, uh, whatever happened, it disappeared. I mean, we did move a lot of wires. We did jiggle a lot of connections. So the problem disappeared. We put a 15 amp fuse back in and we were fine for the rest of the trip. Other than that, you know, checking fluids. One of the Land Cruisers had low oil. Uh, one of the Land Cruisers, the other Land Cruiser, the blue Land Cruiser had a power steering fluid leak. Uh, trail fixes, we, we were able to get oil in and fluids in and we were able to, uh, to move on forward. So enjoy the show, enjoy our, our sightseeing and if you guys ever get a chance to head out to the Panamint Valley, I highly suggest you guys make it happen. It was a, it was a wonderful trip for sure. One for the books. I'll talk to you guys later. Oh yeah. The margin for error. Ooh, this is where it's getting technical. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, baby. Oh, okay. Not working. Maybe he needs to. Try to, try to come straight. Yeah, yeah turn the wheel straight. straight. Kyle, if you turn a little this way, you'll avoid. Yeah, like that's good. Okay, give it a shot. Got it. You gotta fix that parking brake. I think he's better off, dude. Just come right up. 
This is your nose. This was way harder than your nose. Hey, we'll probably want to build this side up more. Yeah. Yours is easy though. Yeah, you just cruise right up it. You took a different line too. Well, I saw where he went and I didn't want to go there. You hung a lot closer to that edge. Yeah. You want to put it up here? Yeah. Okay. Watch out, Jimmy. <laughs> Super Sammy. You nervous, Kyle? <laughs> We'll stand on this side to stop you from rolling. The placement of it just sucks. stiff on but that's what I was expecting you to do too. Check out that epic view. This is Panamint Valley down there. Come across and you see all these trails, burrow trails. All of us. There's all this rock up here. This looks like petrified wood. It's a trip. Josh. All right, hey, we got a Chuck Walla up here in the Panamint Valley, some of the mountains just east of the Panamint Valley. And this is, uh, I think, we think a male Chuckwalla. We actually found him underneath this rock. We saw about this much of the tail sticking out of the rock. And looking at the size of this tail, you can tell that's gotta be a Chuckwalla. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, put him back down on this rock. Let's Thing is you have Josh is always telling me what to do. You want to get in? No, I'm good. He's a little bit of a control freak. Like he won't let me film anything in portrait. It all has to be in landscape. That looks. 
looks like a public restroom up there. Coffee? Yeah. Did you see a Taco Bell or no? Uh, no, they got a Del Taco though. Uh, they're like an invasive store. I did talk about how they have plans to put a Super Walmart and a Starbucks up here. Yeah. That's definitely all little mine. Tell us about the Dr. Pepper bottle. So back in the late 60s, uh, Pepsi was tr trying to make a name for themselves, but the only land that they could afford was up here in the Panamint Mountains. And so this is one of the examples that we have. Uh, they actually had a, a scarcity in glass. So they tried to take the sand from the valley floor. They toted it up here using uh, pack mules, which big, big storm came through. They all got loose and now they're breeding up here. Oh, but anyway, this is what's uh, a remnant of that glass. Notice that they started to bottle it up. They put the cap on it, but they didn't let the glass cool enough and it shattered. So this is one of those bottles that is kind of left over from back in the 1800s. Man, knowledgeable. Josh facts. Check this out. Old mining equipment. This thing. That view. Not sure. There might be some sort of like a compressor, like you guys yeah, were thinking. Like a compressor or some kind of pump. This may be like a pump because look, it's connected to this tank. And then maybe they needed this. an air pump for so the mine it, shaft. It goes to this tank right here. So that's some sort of probably air pump and the engine drives it. Okay. Tracks. Josh is determined to drive a Sammy in a mine. Check out this thing. Electric vent. Chicago, USA. I'm thinking that strong air out. Mine. See, this still spins. Oh, wow. That's impressive. I think it would have been better to back into there. Yeah, I'm trying to get the Chuck Wall in. in. Oh, yeah. Indiana Jones. I can't get out. <laughs> There's still the last the few drill holes. Oh, do you went to the end of it? Yeah, I went to the end. You can see these drill holes, and in one of them, you I don't know if somebody pushed something in there or if it's the uh, old stick of dynamite. Or, well, it's not dynamite, but there's some metal in there. Oh, do you got you got a light on you? Let's walk. Oh, here you yeah. want a light? I got a light. Yeah, let's go. Oh, here's the end. He said that there's some drill marks. I see one there. Oh, yeah, it's a pipe. This is like a little mine shaft for cockroaches. Wall is under there. We got a lot of requests for me to do a video on my truck. So I'm gonna do a video. Behind me is my dirt last dirt nasty low Ford pickup. It's practically restored. I've been working on some upgrades. Let me turn the camera around and show you what I've been doing. So we'll start at the front end. As you can see, this truck sits really low, which I really like. And then I was working on creating it into a convertible hardtop. Almost done with that project. I'm gonna come around to the front here. And uh, I removed a couple of components that I thought would slow it down, like the headlights and the radiator. Um, but the motor, I just went through and tuned it up. So she's all ready to rock and roll. For anyone interested um it's got an upgraded holly see right there get that close and then i just cleaned it up port matched it right there and i also port matched this port here just that one though and then 
if I bring it around to the passenger side, um, as you can see, she just sits right on the frame rails, which I know a lot of people are into. Uh, they did a study on Mythbusters about holes in aerodynamics, and they found that in cruise uh, fuel mileage. So this one's all equipped with that. And take you out of the interior, just freshly fixed it up. Now, I removed everything and just left the springs. It makes it really easy to clean out. Use your garden hose. Uh, the steering wheel, I, I have that off right now, so nobody steals it. Um, take you under the bed. As you can see, it's got a wood bed, custom wood bed. It's held up really well, too. It's a little bit weathered, but as you can see, it, it's, it's holding a little bit of load here, some debris. Um, yeah, anyway, just want to let you guys know about it. It's for sale. Uh, no low ballers. Um, but yeah, just hit me up.
her, bro. Oh, are you Cardi? <laughs> You know, it's illegal to do a U-turn right here. That's not a U-turn. Sir. It's illegal to do a 45-point turn here, sir. <laughs> Stay right, Wayne.
catch the sunset. We gotta catch the sunset. It's so romantic. So just the last cave in. It still goes up, but you know. Turn off your light. Holy smokes. There's a little bit of light from the entrance. Oh yeah. Oh, you can't even pick it up on the camera though. Yeah, I'll First in, huh? It sounds like the NR voice doesn't carry anymore. Yeah. It must go up. Caved in though, huh? Yeah. Oh, no, it definitely went through. Josh always wanted me to get these shots. Please. Go scale that rock face over there so you can get the perfect angle of me driving the Sammy around. Put your life in danger, Alex, he says. Well, that rock is not slippery. It's only at a 45 degree angle off a sheer drop on the sharp rock. But the Sammy, we gotta get good video of the Sammy, he says. All right, I'm ready. Yeah, make sure you film it in landscape. Looking good. Really looks nice, Josh. This is a great shot.